us. We're back from D.C. where we were covering the ACC tournament, which turned into the greatest run for any one team through an ACC tournament in the conference's long and storied history. Can't dispute that. The best ACC tournament from one team in the conference's history came by way of the NC State Wolfpack. The, the, where do you start? I know where it finishes. It finishes with an ACC championship and a spot in the NCAA tournament, an 11 seed against Texas Tech in Pittsburgh. I know where it finishes. Where do we start? I think we have to start with the full season that was where we just said time and time and time again, if they can put it together. And it didn't look like, I mean, it did not look like they would. Anybody who says they saw this coming, they either, I'll, I'll put it this way, they either a part of that that team because it did seem like their their belief was on a hundred from the moment they walked into the gym in in DC. But if it were anybody else, they're lying to you if they say they saw this coming. Just from an injury standpoint, DJ Horn missed the opener, hip flexor. Jaden Taylor hobbled by the end, ankle. Casey Morcel groin slash cramping slash whatever he has going on. Something. DJ Burns fatigue. Right, Every, Everybody was waiting for them to get tired, especially the big boy. Just kept waiting for him to get tired. Fought through it all. They did not get an easy draw. Right, I, I was talking with uh, Mike Glennon, uh, former NC State quarterback. Matter of fact, you can hear part of that conversation on uh, Pack Therapy Podcast, which we, we put out yesterday during Selection Sunday. And, and he said, you know, even I, like a, a state fan, right? State, part of that, part of that family. Uh, he was like, I was hoping Pitt upset UNC because I'm just looking at it thinking, you know, Pitt's probably an easier game in, in the championship. They they got no possible help. Every step along the way, they played the highest seeded team they could possibly play. They played the number one seed, the number two seed, and the number three seed. Five games in five days. There's six teams in the ACC that in their history have won a national championship game. Six teams that have at least one national championship trophy in their lobby. NC State is one of them. We're aware. Yep. The other five, they beat on their way to the ACC championship. They they went Louisville first. They went Syracuse second. They went Duke third, UVA fourth, UNC fifth. That is the hardest possible path you can go from a program standpoint, and they simply lined them up, knocked them down. Let's hear from Kevin Keats on on the fight this team showed. We're getting we're getting the one second. We're getting the two second. I'm getting the uh, I'm getting the uh, the, the nice little hourglass spin wheel. I'm getting okay. that. I'm, right, getting, well, I'm getting that. While while Dennis deals with that, we'll go ahead and, uh, and and just continue. The good news is we could we could hype up this this run through the ACC championship for as much time as I do, we need. I do to. have another clip ready to go. All Keats right, well, talk about how they took advantage of their opportunity. Let's that. do it. Let's hear from Keats. What a tournament! Uh, what a, a great opportunity that you know the guys in that locker room took advantage of. You know when we when we we got on the plane to come to DC, we talked about winning one game at a time, and there would be a big picture, be a prize at the end of it. And you could tell our guys were getting a lot stronger every game that we played. It's weird because you know we the t- we're the team that played, and we were the one who played every game. But it seemed like every second half we got a little bit stronger than the other team. Um, Thank God for our opportunity, believing in our faith. Um, thank all of the families. My wife is here who has supported me, Georgette, and uh, the parents of all of our players. Do you know what I've I, – I, I'm not one downplaying five games in five days. I'm hearing some, oh, they're kids. They play basketball all the time. They're young. Five games in five days, I don't know if everyone completely understands how tough that is. Because, yes, they're, they're you know, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23 years old, and they have more energy than us 30-plus-year-olds have. I get that. But guess who they're playing against? Other 19, 20, 21, 22-year-olds who didn't play that many games in that many days. It's all relative. And until you know how much 
pure effort and how much your adrenaline and your mentals are completely exhausted by playing in a, a, a heck a regular season college basketball game I think it's hard to say that anything is overrated when it comes to an actual tournament game I don't know firsthand but my roommate in college did play college basketball and just the amount of exhaustion those guys would have after a game was unreal and that wasn't the ACC tournament against a top 15 team in the country followed by two more games those those individuals on, on that NC State team, if there was ever an argument for momentum, if there ever was an argument that momentum is real, that that you can catch a wave and ride it, that's what it was. Coaches saying they got stronger in the second half than their opponents. They had every right to be exhausted and just hold on in the second half. If they have a lead, just try to make it to the end without without giving up the final inch. They were getting stronger. Let's hear from DJ Burns on emptying everything in the tank. Yeah, we knew that it was going to be hard. We knew that nothing about this would be easy. So we knew that we just had to get over ourselves and push it to the very absolute limit, and that's what we did. They were willing to go further than other teams were willing to go. They were willing to play through more than other teams were willing to play through. They didn't let it affect them in a way that other teams let it affect them. You can go back and listen to our show after the the NC State Duke game, right? NC State beats Duke. Talking about Duke, one of the first things we said was Jared McCain had bumped heads in in, in warm ups and had mm-hmm. to get stitches on his eye. It affected him. Even John Shire after the game said it affected him. He said he'll never admit it, but it did. Well, I'm looking at State going. Their best player didn't play in week one with a hip flexor. Their their most effective guy early in the tournament ended up hurting his ankle. Uh, that the like so many things happened, and they just said, "Yeah, it happened." But guess what? If we lose this game, our season's over. So we might as well play through it. We might as well find a way. I did some digging, kind of on the the season, like the the ACC tournament for some individual players for NC State versus mm-hmm. what they did in the regular season. For example, Michael O'Connor, who was who phenomenal. did hit a pretty big shot. It made a massive shot. I don't know shot. if he called bank. Doesn't but it matter. Either way. Doesn't matter. During the course of the regular season, there are three games where he scored double digit points. Three. Opening season against opening game of the season against the Citadel at Louisville on January 13th and at Virginia. 14, 11, and a 10 uh, points in those three respective games. In the ACC tournament, he went 16, 16, 12, 12, and 10. <laughs> he had four of his five best scoring games in the entire season in the ACC tournament. Also, only twice the entire season did he hit more than one three-pointer in a game. The season opened against the Citadel and at Louisville on January 13th. He had four and three uh, three-pointers three made in those games. Never hit more than one in any other game the entire season. Against Syracuse, he hit three. Against Duke, he hit two. Against Virginia, he <laughs> hit two. So it's it's those kinds of things. Like Mo Diara, three of his top five rebounding games in terms of total rebounds were in the ACC tournament. We talked about DJ Horn a lot. He had that hot stretch run from the Miami game to the Syracuse game. Those six games, he had 24-plus points, twice going over 30 in that six-game stretch. In the next eight games, up until the ACC tournament, once did he go over 20 points. <laughs> once. And only and three times he had single digits. I know he'll leave game because of yeah. injury and things like that. But then he ends up doing like what he did in the, in the tournament, having multiple 16-point uh, games, and then he had 29 in the championship game while playing like the last 10 minutes with four fouls. So these guys played not only to their max, but almost like above it, if that even makes sense. Well, I mean, from a team perspective, I went I went and looked it up. The Prior to winning five games in five days in the ACC tournament, mm-hmm. they hadn't won five consecutive games all year, the entire season, longest win streak, four. Uh, and prior to this, their longest win streak against Power 5 teams, two. The most consecutive games they won against Power 5 opponents, two, they won against five in five days. If you you just include games against top three seeds in the ACC tournament, it was their longest win streak against Power 5 opponents all year. I mean, I guess if you only have one of those runs in you, save it for the end. Save it for when it it matters. Save it for when the chips are down.